Hello everyone, Mr. Bayer here, and I just want to run you through some of the factors which can affect chemical reactions. So I've got four to do today. Of course, four, I'm wearing gloves, one, two, three, four. One is going to be concentration. So we were looking at here is 0.1 molar HCl and 0.1 molar HCl, 1.0 HCl. So that means that this one here is 10 times, has a 10 times more of a concentration than this one here. We're also two going to be looking at temperature to see if it has an effect. Three, we're going to be looking at surface area to see if that also has an effect. And four, we're going to look at a catalyst and see if that also has an effect on the rate of reaction. All right, so first off, we have got different concentrations here. So this one here on the left, 0.1 molar HCl. All right, and this one on the right is, is 1.0 molar HCl. All right, so that means that this one here is 10 times weaker than this acid here and vice versa. This one here has 10 times the amount of HCl atoms in it compared to this one on the left. Now, they're both at the same temperature, which means we are, we are testing both accurately. And we're gonna see if there's an effect on the time that occurs. So I'm gonna start this clock here, the stopwatch in the corner, and we're gonna have a look. So at 10 seconds, I'm gonna drop them in because I can't drop two in at the same time. If you were here on your own, you'd be able to do it. Whoops. I dropped it in at about 10 seconds. So we're gonna have a look here. So what we notice is we've already got a complete change of reaction. The one molar one is already reacting a lot more violently and a lot more aggressively than the one on the left. And it's only been 26 seconds. So this really goes to show that concentration does play an extremely important role in how chemical reactions take place, all right? So on the left, we have some slight bubbling, okay, but not much is actually going on, to be fair. Again, the oxide layer here might be a bit big, but we can clearly see the one on the right. It's bubbling away like crazy. You're getting a lot of acid metal reaction, which means you are producing a lot of hay, uh, hydrogen 2, H2 gas, all right? Honestly, the one on the left looks like it's not even working. So that's why when we did this in class our first time, I gave you point, uh, 1.0 molar HCl, okay? Because I knew that the 0.1 molar wouldn't be strong enough to really catalyze a reaction in this way, particularly using magnesium metal. So these were both one centimeter, okay? One centimeter of magnesium, both the exact same. I both tried to scratch them with a steel wool to see if I get the oxide layer off. But the only difference here, we kept the temperature the same, we've kept the amount of magnesium the same, we've kept the amount of acid the same. The only thing we have changed is the molarity. So how much it is, how many uh, atoms of HCl there are. So it looks like we barely have even got a reaction going on here. You can see the bubbles showing that we have got a chemical reaction, but it's not as vigorous as the one on the right. Honestly, the one on the left looks like it's stagnated. So we're getting back to here. So we've still got a little bit of bubbling on the right hand test tube and we're only about two minutes 40 in and it's nearly completely gone. So there's honestly just a little piece of metal there on the front. All right, so I'm gonna call it now. So three minutes in, the one on the right has pretty much completely reacted with the magnesium. The one on the left looks like it is still going really, really slowly. Okay, so this is a really good example of how concentration really affects how a chemical reaction can undergo um, and go in a certain pace. Okay, I'll run you through an experiment where we are changing another variable. So what we're doing now is we are keeping both of the acids the same concentration. And in this case, they are both going to be one molar, but we've got a difference in temperature. This test tube on the right, which I've just pulled the thermometer out of now, is at about 50 degrees Celsius, probably about 51. Now the one on the right hand left hand side, 
I've just pulled it out. It's at room temperature and it's about 23 degrees Celsius. And of course, my phone bells over. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a reaction and see if the temperature has an effect on the reaction rate. Now, they're both one molar, they're both 10 mils, and they're both going to have a centimeter of magnesium put inside. All right, so we're going to see if there's any rate of reaction change. All right, and what we should be thinking here is that the higher the temperature, the more collisions. There we go. So, I've just popped it in, and the one on the right looks to be a lot more vigorous than the one on the left. So again, we're only at about 26 seconds here. So one on the right, about 50 degrees, one on the left, about 25. Both one centimeter of magnesium strip. But now, one of the problems with using magnesium in this reaction though, is it will, it's an exothermic reaction, which means the one on the left is going to be raising its temperature. Okay, and this means at one point, both of them will be the exact same temperature because they are losing water as heat and that's gonna be taking some of the heat with it, okay? But again, we've still got some pretty good reactions going on. Hopefully you can hear that gas, it's like a shh. And it's the hydrogen gas being produced. So last time we expected this reaction to last about three minutes. That's how long it took the last one to go. But the one on the right hand side has completely reacted away. There is nothing left and this one is still going. So 50 degrees Celsius, it only took about a minute 30 for that to happen. One on the left is still bubbling. You can see those bubbles there. There is still the tiniest slither of metal there. Can you see that little, little metal speck? You can just see at the front of the left test tube. So you can see it just there, it's still bubbling. It's almost gone from my sight, almost. All right, that's pretty much gone from my eyesight. There's a little bit left, but not much. So again, as you can see, we have had about a minute difference in terms of the reaction, okay? The 50 degrees was about a minute quicker at reacting than the one on the left that was at room temperature. So this gives you some evidence to say that temperature does affect reaction, and the higher the temperature, there should be more of a reaction rate, more to come. Hello everyone, Mr. Bayer again. Um, so finally we're going, going to go through our last kind of factor which can affect reaction type and that's actually using a catalyst. All right, so in particular, a catalyst is, let's define it, is a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. And that's really important to remember is the catalyst itself does not chemically alter or is changed by in, in any way. Okay, so one good way to think about it is in your cars, you have catalytic converters in the exhaust pipe. And what that does is it helps to convert the carbon monoxide and nitrous oxide gases, which come out of your petrol engine, unfortunately. And it converts those into more safer compounds like CO2 and NO2, which in essence then go out into the atmosphere. So it catalyzes that for an extra oxygen to be attached. However, what we're gonna to do today is we're going to look at something called hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide actively decomposes when it um, is in light, okay? So that's why they keep them in blacked out bottles. So therefore you cannot see the chemical. Uh, so therefore the light doesn't penetrate, hit the peroxide and cause it to um, have a, and cause it to decompose. Now today, um, I would have rather had the hydrogen peroxide be about 36%, but we could only get 6% today. So what we would normally be seeing is if it was bright in the middle of the day, but I'm in the middle of, it's about five o'clock at night when I'm filming this, what we would probably see here is we would see small bubbles starting to appear in these test tubes. 
All right, so what I've done is I've kept these the same. These are both about 10 mils of hydrogen peroxide. Yes, it looks like they're different levels, but the test tube on the left is a little bit bigger in terms of wider at the top. So therefore it fills up the same volume, but I did use a measuring cylinder to get 10 mils. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of manganese dioxide into the mix. All right, manganese dioxide is a catalyst to help this reaction go to completion. Now, over time, if I left this in the sun, you would see oxygen bubbles start to appear, which shows that it's decomposing because hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, all right? And it decomposes into water and oxygen gas. So that's why bubbles are a byproduct. But today, I'm going to add a ever small, ever so small spot of magnesium manganese dioxide and see what occurs. All right, so we can already see bubbling occurring, all right? And bubbling is a really good sign that a chemical reaction has occurred. And in particular, this is decomposing. The magnesium oxide is not being consumed in this reaction. All it is doing is it giving it, there's multiple ways that a catalyst can work, and I'll explain that more in class. But what we're starting to see here is we can clearly see it's starting to bubble up. And this bubbles is the oxygen coming out, okay? So all I needed was a little tiny bit. And as we can see, just you've got left with cat without catalyst, right with catalyst. And I can clearly see that there's lots of bubbles going on, which shows you it's starting to decompose. So these two samples are the exact same. So on the left, if I left this all night and then wait for the next morning with the sun, you would hopefully start to see bubbles coming out, but it wouldn't be as quickly as it is with a catalyst. And this is why it proves that it actually increases the chemical rate of reaction. And the manganese dioxide is not being consumed. All right, so after this, I could actually filter this and recapture back the exact same amount of magnesium oxide that I had at the beginning, okay? <laughs> guys back again so now we are going to look at surface area and see if surface area has an effect on chemical reactions so what surface area is is it's the amount of I guess surface that is exposed to the environment and it's or, or to the reaction for a chemical reaction to take place and what the theory is is when you increase the surface area you're going to increase the area where the reaction can occur now in this case I'm going to use Alka-Seltzer tablets as you have seen before, we've used this in class, and I'm just going to release it into some water and we're gonna see what goes on. Now, I have got a complete whole tablet here, as we can hopefully see. So I've got a complete whole tablet here, so I'm just taking my phone out of its little compartment. So we've got a complete tablet here, and I have one that I've crushed into two, four, six, eight, about 10, two, four, six, eight, about nine pieces. Now, theoretically, we have got water at the same temperature, the same amount of Alka-Seltzer tablet. I have spilt a little bit. And of course, that's not going to affect it too much. We're going to see the general effect. And hopefully, when we time it, we are going to see a reaction and see what occurs. So I'm just going to put it back into its little compartment so it stays still while I record. I'm using a pretty dodgy setup because I've got a tripod. I'm literally using a test tube rack with a plastic bit that'll come off. All right, so let's hopefully I can see it, see it down. All right, so as you can see on the left, I'm gonna put the whole tablet. On the right, I'm gonna put the tablet, which has been broken into multiple parts, all right? All right, so I thought I'd be able to do it by 10 seconds, but no, actually, yes. 
All right, so we have a reaction going on, okay? I think, no. I think we can kind of tell which one is reacting a lot more violently. All right, well on the left, I can clearly see all those little tablets are working together. And again, we're 25 seconds in. So we can see the one on the right. Most of it has completely disappeared. Whilst the one on the left still has a huge chunk. All right, so we still get our reactions going on. And that's it. All right, the one on the right looked to complete it much quicker than the one on the left, which shows you that potentially in one minute, the surface area really does affect it. And it seemed to be the one on the right was reacting a lot quicker and completed all of the reaction before the one on the left. All right, so what that goes to show you is that surface area does have an effect on the reaction.